Why should we value the Bible? All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Did you know that before we could own our own copies of the Bible, many people had to lay down their lives so that we could study the word of God ourselves and be saved? The Old Testament was written by faithful prophets of God, such as Daniel, who was cast into the den of lions, and Jeremiah, who was thrown into an abandoned cistern. And the New Testament was written by the faithful apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, like John, who was exiled on the island of Patmos, and Paul, who was imprisoned several times, but still continued to write. They all died as martyrs, just so the gospel could reach us today. Their writings were compiled by the early Christians and were manually copied for distribution in different languages. And thousands of these manuscripts have been thoroughly examined by scholars under God's guidance to find out which books are canon or should be included in the Bible, and which ones should be considered extra-biblical. Therefore, the books of the Old Testament and the New Testament have long been established and used by Christians, even before the Council of Nicaea of the Catholic Church. The only thing the Catholic Church compiled was their own version of the Bible, which includes the Apocrypha, and they translated this compilation into Latin, which only the priests of that time period could understand. And if you'll notice, the Catholic Church does not even follow the Bible, but the Catechism. So if they really wanted everyone to be saved, why did they prohibit the common people from reading the Bible, and killed everyone who translated it into a language that could be understood by many? And John Wyclip is one of them. Wyclip wanted everyone, even the poor, to read the Bible. So, in 1380, he took the lead in translating the Bible from Latin into English. The printing press was only invented by the year 1440, so they manually copied every single word of the Bible. Can you imagine how much effort that must have taken? After four years, Wyclip died of natural causes, but the proliferation of his Bible continued. So even 44 years after his death, he was still condemned by the Catholic Church as a heretic, and they dug up his remains to burn them and throw them into the river. Another one of those who were killed by the Catholic Church is William Tyndale. Tyndale was the first person to translate the Bible from the original Greek and Hebrew manuscripts to English. He finished translating the New Testament, but he never got a chance to finish translating the Old Testament because he was captured and killed by the strangling and burning at the stake. But before Tyndale died in 1536, this was his dying prayer to God. Lord, open the eyes of the King of England. And God answered his prayer. Because after only two years, King Henry VIII authorized the translation of the Bible into English and commanded that every parish should have a copy of an English Bible that everyone could see and read. As a result, the Great Bible was formed, which was derived from the Tyndale Bible. It was called the Great Bible because of its large size. But when the Geneva Bible was printed in 1560, it quickly surpassed the popularity of the Great Bible because the Geneva Bible was the first Bible in English to use modern chapter and verse divisions and added commentaries or study notes. But these commentary notes are pro-Calvinist, or based on the teachings of John Calvin, which challenged the divine right of kings. And King James I did not like that, so in 1604, he commissioned 51 scholars to retranslate the whole Bible from the original Hebrew and Greek manuscripts and to remove those commentary notes, which could affect the reader's interpretation of the Bible. And in 1611, the King James Bible was successfully printed, and up to this day, it is still the most ubiquitously used version all around the world, and it is considered as the authorized version of the Bible. And it was only in the 1900s that the new translations of the Bible emerged, such as the New World Translation produced in 1947. They say that the reason for these new translations is because the King James Version employed archaic language, which is hard to understand. But their real agenda is to corrupt the preserved word of God by replacing or omitting words to change the meaning of a verse. For example, if you compare 1 John chapter 5 verse 7 to the King James Version to all the other translations, you will notice that they omitted the phrase about the Godhead so that people will not recognize the divinity of our Lord Jesus and of the Holy Spirit. And FYI, I also compared this verse with the Geneva Bible, and it's exactly the same as the King James Version. Many people have laid down their lives just so that we could read the unadulterated word of God today. So don't let their sacrifices be in vain. 
And if you have the money and time for your vices, why can't you spend a little money to buy yourself a Bible? Or at the very least, download and read the free Bible apps on your cell phone. Brothers and sisters, God has done everything to bring his word closer to us. And we don't need any other book, because the Bible is already complete. And of its 66 books, none of these will fail. None shall want her mate, for it is from the mouth of God, and his spirit has gathered them. One of the reasons for why there are so many religions in the world is the use of the apocryphal books, or extra-biblical sources. And when we use different reference books, our beliefs will also be different. The Bible is the written word of God, and the words of God are pure. Like silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. And the Lord has kept them, and preserved them in all generations forever. So, if God wills a particular book to be included in the Bible, it shall be done. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, his counsel shall stand, and he will do all his pleasure. Therefore, apocryphal books such as the Book of Enoch are not meant to be included in the Bible, because such books have nothing to do with our salvation, and they only teach another gospel. Enoch was the seventh generation from Adam, and the father of Methuselah, who lived for 365 years. And by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God. Thus many believe that it is impossible that Enoch himself wrote this book. So the book of Enoch is considered as pseudepigrapha. Pseudepigrapha are the books that attempt to imitate scripture, but were written under false names. The book of Enoch is all about rebellious angels called the Watchers, and if you examine this book carefully, especially 1 Enoch chapter 71 verses 13 and 14, it says here that Enoch is the son of man, and not our Lord Jesus Christ. You are the son of man who is born for righteousness, and righteousness dwells upon you, and the righteousness of the head of days will not forsake you. Again, in Enoch chapter 40 verse 9, it says here that the hope of those who will inherit eternal life is the angel Phanuel, not our Lord Jesus Christ and the fourth who presides over repentance and the hope of those who will inherit eternal life is Phanuel. Can you see now how dangerous this book can be? It may contain some truth, but that's how the devil works. He mixes a little truth with a lot of lies. Many more apocrypha came out besides the book of Enoch, such as the Gospel of Thomas which says every woman has to make herself into a man before entering the kingdom of heaven, and the Gospel of Judas, saying that Judas was not a traitor but a hero who helped our Lord Jesus to escape this corrupt world by handing him over to death. And the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, which teaches the Gnostic notion that Jesus' teaching was the path to eternal life, rather than his suffering and death on the cross. These are just a few examples of why we should not use other books outside of the 66 books included in the Bible. So instead of searching for truth in extra-biblical sources, search the scriptures, for only in them alone can you find the way to eternal life. And these scriptures testify of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching and may God bless you.